The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, everybody. We'll be starting soon. We have a little countdown going on. Looks like we have a minute and 35 seconds to go. Uh, we're just trying to get everybody to join. It looks like there is a big group already. Um, so we'll just wait one more minute. All right, so before we start, um, we do, you know, we'll be monitoring the Q&A, so feel free to put Q&A into um, the mix, I guess. And then we also have two polls that we'll be sending out, so be on the look at, look out for those. Um, we'll be interested to hear what you respond as. So it looks like we just have um, a few seconds left and then we'll start. All right. All right, great. Well, welcome everybody. Uh, thank you for joining our webinar on AI and the future of CMS. Uh, my name is Charlene Sani, part of the marketing team here at Progress Software. Um, today we have Visus uh, speaking on AI and the future of CMS. Um, this is a huge topic for all of us. Um, we can't go anywhere without hearing about a AI. Um, so we look forward to hearing more. Now let's go to the introductions. Great. All right, so today's speakers, you have myself, um, part of the marketing team. Um, I'm a partner development specialist. Uh, and our special guest, Lino, is the CTO of Vices. Uh, then we move on to Jonathan. He is our Sitefinity Solutions Engineer. And last but not least, Sergey Sokolov from Sitefinity Product Management. So welcome everybody. We are recording today's webinar and you'll receive a copy of this after the session. Um, also at the end of Lino's presentation, we'll have Q&A session. So feel free to add them in the chat. So I will turn it over to Lino. Excellent. Thank you so much, Charlene. And hello, everybody, and welcome. And thank you so much for taking this hour out of your time to share with us in here. It's, uh, hopefully, it will be a lot of productive and informative information as well. Uh, my name is Lino Tadros. I'm the CTO at Vices. Vices has been in the industry for over 29 years. We are headquarters in Santa Barbara in California. And we have offices all over the United States, also in Central and South America. We cover all uh, time zones here in the United States as well. And we have uh, members of the team that are uh, certified on Azure, AWS, Google Cloud, a lot of different data uh, analytics, um, AI and machine learning. Um, and of course, we have certification on multiple CMS systems and Sitefinity from Progress, of course, is one of them as well. And we are very well known for enforcing the 4D process for success, uh, define, design, development, and deployment. Uh, we are a Microsoft partner. We, of course, are a Sifinity certified partner and a premium um, developer partner as well. You will see on my, on my slide the, the URL for our website. We would love for you to visit us at uh, vicesllc.com. And also, I'm putting actually my email address here in the slide as well. To reach out to me, I'll be more than happy to set some time with you and your uh, team at your company to discuss AI and future needs in your company as well. All right. Let's go ahead and start talking about the fun part about AI and the future of CMS. So uh, in the next maybe 35 minutes or so, I want to take you on this journey of six different blocks that I believe it will change the CMS industry completely in the future. So I'm going to start with personalization. 
And uh, after that, oh yes, let me go ahead and run a poll really quickly. Um, this is, this is going to be a poll just to find out how many people are actually uh, dealing with AI right now in their company. So if you can actually fill this one up for us really quickly, that would be great. We're not going to spend a lot of time on it, but uh, Charlene, maybe 30 seconds or 45 seconds max. And hopefully we can get an idea. Uh, how would you like yeah. to use AI in the future from content generation or from uh, tone of voice analysis, NLPs, content of image classification? What exactly is it that you're looking for from AI before we even start? We will also have another yeah. poll at the end of the session uh, to get uh, some more information from you regarding your vision for the future as well. Yeah, All right. So this is interesting. Um, I don't know if you can see the poll, but it says, you know, 31% of you are using it for content generation. Oh, yes. And we'll be talking a lot about that <laughs> coming up. So uh, this yeah. is great. And 15% uh, are saying uh, other, 10% uh, from tone and voice analysis. We'll be sharing that with everybody as well. So we'll give it maybe another 10 seconds uh, and then we'll keep going. Is that okay, Charlene? That sounds great. So I'm surprised that 53% are saying none, but that's interesting. Hopefully, I will change their mind in the next 40 minutes. How about that? Right. I <laughs> believe you will. <laughs> All right. Excellent. I'm going to close out the poll. All right. Let's go ahead and close out the poll. All right. So we're back now. So these are the six things I would like to talk to you about today. The personalization, uh, that's the future of AI in, uh, in the CMS. Content creation, which is, looks like something that 30% of the people were very interested in content optimization, content curation, management, and finally, one of the most important thing is the marketing recommendation as well. So let's go ahead and go for it. I'm gonna start with the first one, the personalization. So you will notice there is eight different things that the future of CMS will be impacted by AI. First of all is the content recommendation. You will notice that the AI algorithms will be able to analyze users' behavior, preferences, historical data, to offer definitely a personalized content recommendation. Uh, it will try to understand user interests and patterns. It all depends on, on the huge amount of data that's being collected over the years to be able to do a good predictions of what recommendation should happen to the content itself. So CMS systems in general um, can dynamically uh, definitely present relevant content to individual users, increasing engagement and satisfaction as well. The next item will be user segmentation. A lot of people call this personas. Uh, user segmentation, AI will enable us to definitely segment users based on their characteristics, behavior, preferences. This segmentation will allow CMS administrators and backend users in your system to create personalized user experiences and deliver targeted content to specific audience segments. This would be huge because improving engagement and conversion rates will be the main goal for any marketing team, for instance, in a company. The next one is adaptive interfaces. This is one of the most interesting one, at least for me. I've been seeing a lot of different demos at Microsoft and on Amazon in Seattle. Uh, things that are happening in the next couple of years will be amazing regarding uh, AI-powered CMS systems that can adapt uh, their interfaces based on individual user preferences and behavior. I'll give you an example, for instance. Uh, can you imagine how to adapt interfaces based on, uh, let's say, the layout of the page, or adjust the font size, or change the color of the scheme based on who you are? Maybe um, there is information about you in your profile, or even your CMS is connected to a Salesforce or HubSpot or something else as a CRM, and we know more about you. Maybe you have uh, an accessibility issue, vision issue. So it will automatically make the font bigger when you're logged into the system without you asking. Um, I even seen some system uh, currently with companies being built in the United States and in Europe as well, where they will ask you in the browser to take a picture of you and you'll have to allow in the browser, whether it's Chrome or Edge or Firefox or Firefox. <laughs> um, and being able to take a picture and being able to see if you're wearing a glasses and if you're squinting, can you believe that? It'll be able on that to be able to automatically make the font larger based on that. It's amazing things that we're gonna see coming up from adaptive interfaces just by looking at your website in a CMS system in the future. The next one is automated content creation. A lot of people showed interest in this one. And this is a tricky one, I have to say because it has currently a legal implication in the world, because this is in its infancy. So a lot of people don't know how to deal with that. You probably notice in the news, a lot of media companies, big, big media companies are really upset about the fact that 
uh, a bot, for instance, or an AI model will go ahead and read from other websites content and base uh, uh, content creation based on things that they learn from other websites. So they don't want people to steal their content. But in reality, your content is public already. So you'll have to really understand that uh, with the legal approach of it, do you really own that content if it's available public? Um, so this is something that we have to, de to deal with for the, next, for the next maybe couple of years until the industry and the legal system understands really what can and cannot be done and being able to, uh, to treat everybody fairly based on their content creation as well. But you can imagine a system, for instance, and a CMS system will generate personalized product descriptions press releases, articles, blog posts, marketing materials, tailored to a specific user segment, reducing, of course, all the manual effort and enable dynamic content updates on the fly. The next one is the A-B testing and optimization. This would be huge. Right now, a lot of the different CMS systems in the world can do A-B testing, uh, and it can actually optimize it. But you have to do all the work. You'd have to create the variations. You have to decide, do you want to run the A-B testing for seven days, a week, uh, a month, uh, a quarter? All of these things are decisions that you have to make. That's great. But in the future, I believe in the A-B testing and optimization will be done by AI. AI will look at the industry, will look outside of your website, and also will look at the previous A-B testing that you have done before and be able to make a decision and recommendation and optimization to tell you, like, you should run this with this type of variation and it should run for 30 days. Anything less than that was not effective last time so that you will get a lot of help from AI based on patterns and models to be able to give you that information as well. Voice and chat bot integration. This is definitely a big, big subject in the industry to be able to bring up a chat bot. Uh, some uh, CMS systems out there have ones built in, like Sitefinity, for instance, that we will talk to Sergey and Jonathan later on, can be very helpful. It has access to the data in your database in Sitefinity, for instance, and being able to get you information from FAQs and others as well. Uh, and you can actually upgrade it to actually talk to a specific a real person uh, there are some legal implication in there as well, which is now the law requires that if it's all AI, you have to be able to tell the customer right away from the beginning that they're not talking to a real person as part of the, again, figuring out all the legal mumbo jumbo in the world, but it's going to be important to understand all that. Also, predictive analytics is a big deal. AI in the future will analyze historical data to predict users' behavior and preferences and engagement patterns. Uh, again, it will leverage these predictions to proactively personalize content recommendation on the fly. Offers, maybe you have a chain of pizzas, uh, cu customers, for instance, to have maybe 20 or 30 different pizza uh, stores in a specific city, for instance, to be able to offer something based on the proximity. If you're running the website from a mobile app, all of these things will, will be automatic with AI to bring able to give you an offer as a notification on the top of your phone and so on. It will be amazing being able to use all the stuff to your benefit in the future as well. The last one in this personalization is customer journey optimization. AI will help us optimize the customer journey by analyzing multiple touch points and interactions. It will be able to monitor exactly who you are. We might not, uh, we might not know your email address or who you really are, but we might, not, we might just know your persona, that you like to go to these pages and you like to do interact with these videos and these um, uh, PDF files, and uh, you have a specific interest in maybe one out of maybe 20 or 30 products available on our website. So that's important for me to optimize the journey and try to change things on the fly as well. Some of these things are available in some of the CMS systems today, and some are actually adding more and more AI model to make this automatic without you having to do all the work as a marketeer in the back end as well. Let's move now to content creation, which the the one that most people said uh, this would be an interesting part for you. So uh, there are five sections on this one, the content creation. First of all, you probably heard of NLP, but natural language generation, which is NLGs, will be the thing that will be used the most in the CMS world. It can automatically generate content based on predefined templates and data inputs. It's not going to be about really development anymore. So you will not hear a lot of people spending a lot of time writing code, widgets and modules. These things Visual Studio and other tools will be able to create a lot of the stuff for you uh, using uh, Copilots and Copilots X uh, for, for source code. Once you give it a model of Sitefinity or other 
CMS systems, it will be able to generate the code. That will not be the important things going into the future. Don't worry if you're a developer, your job is not going away. But in reality, a lot of the cookie cutter code will probably be easily uh, done by bots and by AI plugins in the future as well. But creating templates and data inputs, that will be the major point of using natural language generation. For example, let me tell you like we can utilize AI to create product descriptions, uh, press releases, blog posts, social media updates. All of these things can happen automatically using the NLGs. And this automation will reduce the time and effort required for manual content creation in the future for sure. The next one would be content enhancement and optimization. You probably heard about a lot of different companies that have been available around for a long time that will check your grammar, your typos, all of these things. These companies are great, but they will have to evolve because that will be part of every single CMS in the future. So the algorithms will be able to analyze existing content and provide suggestions for improvement. That can offer recommendation on grammar, readability, tone. Tone is a big deal for some languages in the world. It's all based on the tone and it can mean something completely different. So that will be a completely different model that will help you optimize the content on your website as well. The next one is the language translation and localization. This one is very dear to our heart here at Vices because we do a lot of that work for our customers as well. In the future, AI powered language translations uh, models can be, will be integrated into CMS system to automatically translate the content. And this is a tricky piece. Some countries, it's okay to use an automatic translator like from Google or from others as well. Um, Spanish, French, Italian, but some countries, especially in the Far East, for instance, they do not like it when you actually use an automatic translation. That's why people sometimes have to pay a little bit extra budget for that to be able to send an Excel spreadsheet or use a third party company that will translate something in a specific language, for instance, to make it more acceptable to that culture and so on. And in the future, the language translation and localization will put all the stuff in mind uh, and will be able to do a better job by using patterns to find out how other things got translated using uh, Japanese, Chinese, and so on in the Far East uh, and go from there. So this would be an amazing uh, advancement in the, in the next couple of years for that as well. The next one is the visual content creation. And this is uh, something that is very dear to my heart. I like to play with that stuff a lot, which is how to uh, create creation of visuals content. So I can actually tell the system, I'm writing a blog, uh, maybe about Sitefinity or another uh, CMS system. And this is the subject I'd like to, to talk about. And please generate an image for me that matches what I'm writing about. It's amazing right now, there are so many different tools in the industry like Lenza and Dali and all of these that you can actually use for free. And of course there's a pro version of all of these, but you can tell it a few sentences of what you have in mind and it will create an image for you based on that. Not only that, but I was playing around um, in Seattle at the Microsoft Build Conference a couple of weeks ago. And I was able to go to in front of a camera and being able to take my picture and then move to the right, move to the left. It took my picture with 125 different spots on my face. And then you can go tell it, use that face to create um, a script and a video for 10 to 15 seconds to introduce myself. And this is what I want that person to be saying. And then I was shocked to see myself talking <laughs> and it looked very normal. I mean, it will get better and better, of course, but it, will, uh, it was really freaky to me to see myself saying something I did not say. <laughs> but, it was, but this is what we're going to get into by creating courses, by creating training courses and so on to be able to make this uh, unified as well. The final part is the content planning and strategy. AI in the future will definitely provide insights and data-driven recommendations for content planning and strategy will be very important for decision makers and marketeers as well. And that would be by analyzing the behavior, marketing trends and competitors data, which is gonna be very important to understand as well. The algorithms and AI can suggest content topics, timing, distribution channels, all of that stuff will be considered, of course, during the model generation as well. All right, let's go to the next one and see what we're gonna get from content optimization. Again, a lot of uh, IT and marketeers are very uh, definitely keen on getting the best uh, rating, whether it's from Google or Bing or Yahoo or from others as well. So SEO optimization is a big deal. You will notice there is a lot of CMS systems out there that will have plugins, for instance, that help you with SEO. will be able to tell you, create, uh, uh, a title that doesn't go more than a specific amount of characters and uh, because they know the algorithms coming in from Google and, and Bing and Yahoo and so on. And also they, 
the description of the page and the keywords and all of these things. So instead of you having to do all that stuff, AI will be able to match, to find out, are you using the same words in your title and description that will give you a higher rating? Are you doing a dash in the title? And we'll give you a recommendation right away in the back end to help you get the most out of your SEO optimization without you having to make these decisions or read the books about algorithms for all these different companies as well. Content quality assessment, be able to read your blog post before you publish it or your press release or your event and being able to give you a score for content quality. Are you repeating yourself? Are you having grammar issues? Are you missing something? Is there something in the industry, in the industry that I can see outside based on 150,000 articles written about, written about the same subject that you are missing in your blog post? Do you have enough links? Uh, outside for credibility. All of these things is the quality of the content that the AI will be able to do for you. We talked already about the multivariant testing with A-B testing. All of these things will be very important for content optimization as well. And I know I talked about NLG, but let me go ahead and take a minute and talk about NLPs as well, which is natural language processing for audience understanding, being able to uh, use NLP techniques uh, to analyze user generated content comments, social media discussions, feedback, to gain insight into the audience sentiments. If people are talking about my company and my website on, on Twitter or on LinkedIn or on Facebook, I want to actually gather that information. I want it to be part of my understanding of what I need to do, what people are complaining about or what people are happy about as well. It's not only one source. Um, CMS systems definitely will utilize this information to optimize content by aligning it with the audience expectation and preferences as well. The last piece of the content optimization will be the intelligent content recommendation. So AI will allow us to analyze the behavior, the preferences, the contextual data to definitely provide intelligent content recommendation uh, for your website and for your company as well. The next one is the content cur curation. This is a big deal. So we have seven items in the content creation. The first one is automatic content tagging. A lot of people that use CMS system, whether it's from Progress or from another company, you are pretty much aware of taxonomies and classifications. To be able to write a blog post or a press release or any kind of even custom uh, module content, for instance, in any of these CMS systems, it would be nice for the system to read that content and be able to suggest tagging categories and taxonomies of whatever kind. And you can still have the final word whether you want to accept it or not, but to recommend tagging will be a very important part that will be based on patterns happening in other um, articles that have been written on your site or even on your competitor site as well. The next one is personalized recommendation. And again, we talked a little bit about this. It's always going to be based on behavior, preferences, interactions to provide personalized content recommendation on the fly. The next one we also talked about, but it will be part of the curation, which is content quality. Uh, this is to be able to see the grammar, the readability, the coherence, and the factual accuracy available. There is a lot of companies right now that would like to use an AI to find out what you're reading on Facebook or Twitter is a fact or not. And they will put a logo saying, this is proven to be non-fact. This was a lie kind of thing. So sometimes it's important to have an AI to run this towards hundreds and hundreds of thousands of different articles and find out what the truth is. And it's not easy to do that, but the AI models have been written already in the industry that will be able to do that. So this would be a, a great addition, definitely, to uh, a, a single source of truth, pretty much. The next one is content generation. We talked about this already. Uh, be careful with this one. Uh, the, the legal system is still trying to define what you can and, and cannot uh, get to make your content based on with AI. Um, I believe at the end, if it's a public information that's available on any public website, it's a fair game to be able not to copy it word by word, but you can actually comprehend what it's saying and be able to use it in your own content generation as well. We'll see where that will go in the future as well. The next one is trend analysis and prediction. So the AI will analyze large, large amount of data, which is the most important thing about AI. It loves a lot of data. So if you give it a lot of data, you're going to get more accurate results. If it's not too much data, uh, unfortunately, it doesn't have the capability of being able to predict without huge amount of patterns. So including that coming from social media, press releases, blog posts, the user behavior on the site, identifying emerging trends and predict future content, all the stuff will be put in mind when we do trend an uh, analysis and prediction as well. The next one is automated content moderation. 
I had the pleasure of actually implementing this without AI in the past in multiple CMS systems. Sometimes people will tell me, we do not want people to comment on our blog post or our press releases and putting bad words in there. So usually you go into the database or have a, a flat file. It has all the bad words in the English language. <laughs> and then whenever you go ahead and do a commit part of your workflow to pass all the information in the comment through that filter, and if there is any word used in sort of that bad uh, language file, we will put dot, dot, dot. We'll replace it on the fly, for instance. But that does not help us with hate speech or spam. AI will be able to definitely be able to figure it out, finding out your comment has a discrimination element to it, hate speech uh, uh, in it, spam in it. Uh, the difference between putting a link in the comment that is real or a link to actually because you're trying to sell something and people consider that to spam. All the stuff will be automatic. You don't have to moderate that yourself in the future as well. Enhanced search capabilities. So AI search algorithms will definitely improve the accuracy and the relevancy of the search results within any CMS system in the future. And that by understanding really the intent, the context, the natural language, be able to understand what you're trying to do. You get two different people uh, logged into the same website and they are both searching for exactly the same word. They might get completely different results because I know, for instance, what Lino likes and what Lino is interested in and what Sergey, for instance, likes and interested in. So same site, same exact word that you're searching for, you're going to get a completely different results based on what the system knows, what you're interested in, what you're looking for on the site and so on. Relevancy will be a major thing in the future as well. There is a note here on the right side, if you can see it on the screen, I just wanted everybody to understand that the importance that human beings are not going to go away, all right? AI can automate certain aspects of the content, definitely, but the human's oversight and interventions are still crucial. Uh, you hear a lot in the news these days that the, uh, the, the AI model went rogue. Uh, it starts actually giving some useless information. And that's uh, pretty much, yes, that's called the, the AI model is getting drunk. And that's okay. It happens sometimes. And with the uh, advancement in technology, even in the next five to six years, when we see our first quantum computer actually coming to life, uh, it's moving very, very fast. Hopefully in the next five to six years, that's what the, uh, the researchers are expecting, the first one that will have enough qubits to be able to allow us to do that. The AI prediction will be a lot more solid. So we're actually living in a time where things are going to become really, really interesting in the next few years as well. The next one is the content management. Again, some of them are repeated, but you will need to understand dealing with automated meta generation, your title, your description, your keywords, anything that will go into the meta section of your pages and so on. You don't have to do it manually. The system can actually read the content on the page and being able to tell you what your metadata should be. It could be automatic or you can request approval before the metadata can be changed as well. So this would be a great thing. Even the tags and the categories and the Taxonomies in general can be generated the same exact way. Intelligent content classification will be important for AI in the future to classify content on its characteristics, topics, sentiments, relevance. All the stuff will be done as well in that. Content versioning and collaboration. This is one of my favorite ones, by the way. The content um, versioning and collaboration. Can you imagine, for instance, you having a website and maybe on the home page? Uh, and you go visit that page every week. You can never tell if there is new information or not. You have to read the page to find out if there is some more information from the last week. But the system can find out who you are, even if you did not log in based on your IP address or something, to find out that person saw that page last week, but we modified the home page three days ago. So I'm going to put a logo at the top that says page updated. So when I come visit the page, only me from my browser, from my IP address, I'll be able to see that logo to tell me that something changed on the home page. You might want to spend some time and read the new stuff. And maybe I can highlight it, put a, some kind of a border in a different color to tell you this is the new content on the home page. Other people will not see it because they have already visited the page in the last couple of days. So it would be amazing to be able to create versioning and collaboration on the page itself. The next one is content workflow automation. So AI will be able to automate content workflows by, of course, you can analyze the predefined rules that you set and the triggers. And the AI algorithms can assign tasks, route content, uh, review and approve and deny and reject. All the stuff can be done automatically. Right now, most systems, including, of course, Sitefinity, 
um, can actually do that, have an approval system based on one, two, or three different uh, approval stages, for instance. But in the future, it will be more than that. It will be based, let's say, for instance, Sergey is, uh, is creating uh, uh, blogs directly from Boston in Massachusetts. And every week he puts a blog out from Boston, Massachusetts. All of a sudden, um, he flies and goes to California or goes somewhere in Europe and is trying to blog a post from there. The system will actually require an approval on that because something is different. Uh, a lot of the different public clouds have this type of mechanism to be able to do 2FAs or MFAs. And the same thing we can do with automation for workflow automation as well. When something changes that the system would say, after three months on the job, you can actually publish your own blog post. But in the first three months, we really don't want you to put anything public on the website uh, without actually having somebody else approving it first. So there will be no um, babysitting of the system, what I want to say, that the system can figure out the policy and being able to act on it automatically. Uh, the next one is content governance and compliance. This is a big one. A lot of companies that we work for want to make sure that the content and the way they're doing things on the network, for instance, is PCI compliant, is HIPAA compliant for medical companies. And it will be nice to actually have AI let us know if we're doing something against these compliance policies that will fail the audits, for instance. It will be a very, very important thing for content management for that as well. The last one on this one is the chatbots and the virtual assistants. So, AI-powered chatbots and virtual assistants can be definitely integrated. And we know that Sitefinity has one for the native chat uh, uh, that is available, but other CMS systems can use them as well. Some of them are not very AI-based. Um, we call them the if statement robots, <laughs> right? So that means you have to define everything in FAQs and so on. And some continue to have uh, more and more AI models to be able to look at the data, look at your competitors' data, look at the internet data and being able to come up with results on the fly. And this is what Microsoft is doing with the co-pilots that is actually being integrated in almost every single product from Microsoft at this point going forward. The last one that I wanted to talk to you about, and that will be my last slide, and then we'll open it up and have some questions for our dear guests, for Sergey and Jonathan as well. But I want to talk about the marketing recommendations. That, I left it for the last one because I think this is where, to be honest with you, where the money is going to be. Because marketing budgets will be definitely more in this area than IT budgets or development budgets and so on. So I have 10 different things that I believe marketing recommendations with AI for CMS systems will be very impactful. The first one is personalized content recommendation. And we talked about this before. We talked about looking at the behavior or whoever is coming to the site their interactions, uh, how to provide personalized content recommendation for each and every single persona. Uh, and the CMS system can leverage AI, of course, to recommend engines uh, to suggest relevant articles, press releases, products, offers, um, or resources tailored to that individual user coming to the site as well. The next one would be the target audience segmentation. Again, I would love for the system to create the personas itself. A lot of times, the CMS system currently, you have to define maybe two, three, four, or even five different personas, and you can start collecting data to be able to find out if your audience meet the criteria and the rules of the specific persona. But sometimes you don't know where to start. You want the system to come up with like a few different personas by monitoring who's coming to the site for the last couple of weeks or the last couple of months, depending on how big the size of the site is. And in the future, target audience segmentation will be done automatically based on interest, demographics, purchase history on the site. That will happen that way. The next one is dynamic pricing optimization. I love this one. <laughs> this is for me like driving here. I live in Orlando and here in Florida. And when I drive maybe one mile away from my house, there is a gas station. And every day I can see the number of of the price of the gas going up or going down. And it always has to do, of course, with the price of uh, oil. It, it depends on uh, the taxes and it depends also on your competition. The other gas station half a mile away from them lowered the price and they don't wanna lose their customers. So there's a lot of that stuff happening. That's why the number keeps going up and down in gas stations. Same thing will happen with your products. If there's a major competition, I want the system to always keep monitoring my pricing, my competitors' monitoring, uh, uh, pricing, and also what's happening in the industry. Whether there is a recession, whether there is something, a graduation, a lot of things could impact that. And I want the system to recommend 10% discount before Christmas, 20% before that. 
um, something is happening in the industry. The Federal Reserve said something that will cause people to actually be very tight with, with budget. So all of that stuff could actually be done with AI to give you optimization for the pricing of your product on your website. It doesn't have to be a manual job to do all that work going forward. The next one is marketing channel selection. Again, I want to do some analysis on my historical data on campaign performance, customer behavior, channel effectiveness to recommend the most suitable marketing channels for me and for my company. Campaigns, um, uh, conversions, how they're happening based on all that stuff. So CMS systems can definitely utilize AI in the future to provide this kind of insight into the channels themselves that are likely to generate the highest engagement and conversion for targeted marketing efforts. Make sense? The next one is the customer journey optimization. We talked about this a little bit um, ago, and this is for marketing, will be based on touch points, identifying opportunities for optimization, and AI will be able to help us by looking at the behavior or the visitor of the visitor, the pain points, the conversion bottlenecks, how long are they staying on the site, why are they leaving immediately? They did not see what they were looking for, so I need to uh, recommend different data on these pages to keep their attention. All of that stuff will happen with customer journey optimization as well. We talked about predictive analytics. Uh, predictive analytics, we talked about it. This is based on the timing, uh, content formats, uh, campaign types. Do people like to see videos? They don't want to read. They want to watch the videos. I want to find out. If, if you show me that you're always getting videos, I would like to actually always put my... Uh, my, uh, my right foot forward and show you videos on the site. If you're a reader and you like to see PDFs and download white papers, I wanna actually tailor my, uh, my website to your preference on how you like to do this type of stuff for predictive analytics. The next one is to add, is add campaign optimization. Add campaign optimization, we will be able to use AI in the future to optimize digital advertising campaigns. And that will be by analyzing the real-time data coming to the site identifying high performance ad, automatically adjusting targeting parameters, bid strategies, creative elements, all the stuff will definitely help us create better campaign and optimize them for our website. Number eight will be social media engagement optimization. This is a big one. A lot of people take advantage of that, but AI will do a better job. If you have a budget for next quarter, you wanna find out should I actually spend that budget advertising on Twitter or Facebook or LinkedIn or where should I spend that budget? So I want the system to take a look, finding out from the UTM sources and the UTM media and who actually caused me the biggest uh, bang for the buck, all righty? Uh, maybe the system will say, I recommend for you to spend your budget next quarter on Twitter because that's the one that got us the most conversions and maybe no, maybe for uh, pretty close to the last quarter of the year, Facebook always does better. And this is, I don't want to figure all the stuff out myself. AI models are definitely available and will be used in the future for CMS to be able to give you that kind of recommendation as well. I have two more. The next one is the customer retention strategies. That's a big one as well, is that I would like to be able to analyze the customer data, the churn patterns, and the engagement metrics and find out if the CMS system can utilize these AI algorithms and models to recommend personalized uh, patterns and strategies to be able to get email campaigns, loyalty programs, re-engagement initiatives, all of that will help me uh, with, uh, with reducing the churn rates for my customer retention. The last one is the competitor analysis insight. Extremely important. It's not only about your data. AI can look at your competitors. As a matter of fact, you can tell it who your competitors are and they can actually monitor that, what's happening in their world. Or you maybe you don't know all your competitors and the system should be able to go out and find some of your competitors out there on the internet. That's how powerful AI can be as well. They, you might be introduced to new companies that compete with you that you didn't even know about using these models in the future for CMS. So market insight to provide recommendation, competitive analysis, understanding the strengths and the weaknesses of your competitors versus your own. Uh, marketing positioning, marketeers will be able to adjust their own strategies to gain a competitive advantage. So like I said, I was going to take 40 minutes and I'm at 39 minutes. I went really fast, but hopefully you got an idea of what we are up against in the next few years. And sometimes it's even before a uh, few years. It might be a few months for this stuff because everywhere you go right now, everybody's talking about AI and um, uh, chat GPT and GPT-4s and 
uh, all the different models. So this is the number one thing. There is no way you can go on the internet or hear a discussion about the technical industry and find out somebody not talking about these things. So it is definitely a revolution happening in the industry. So we all are gonna be part of this in the future as well. We're living in an exciting time. So at this point, I would love to bring in uh, my two dear friends, Jonathan Reed and Sergey. I would like to start asking you know, a couple of questions about everything I said, but I would love to actually find out the roadmap on their own product, not just in general about CMS. I would like to find out what their uh, intentions are for the roadmap. Maybe we will hear some uh, things from Sergey today that will give us a hint about what's coming up using AI inside Finity in the future. But I'm going to start with you, Jonathan. Uh, Jonathan, what do you think based on what I talked about and your understanding, of course, of AI, how do you think that's going to affect uh, developers in general? Before we get to Sergey, we talk about business analysts and talk about marketeers from a developer perspective, because I know you're a geek like me. So that's right. how do you think AI is going to help developers and IT personnel with CMS in the future? Yeah, I mean, I think maybe like, uh, you know, uh, other developers, you know, we're, we're scared at first, you know, the, the rumors of can it take over, right? Uh, I, I think about uh, what's that uh, Will Smith movie where the AI takes over or whatever, right? So uh, I don't think so. Um, it's a, a powerful tool, right? <clears throat> Not only for us as developers to actually do more uh, things more rapidly uh, through the industry, but also to discover more topics uh, about how we could be more rapid. And then as far as, you know, integrations and, and other things, uh, I've seen, you know, some some great success already. Uh, you know, we've we've had uh, some extensions in Sitefinity before uh, ChatGPT came along to do sentiment analysis of, of content and information. Is it positive? Is it negative? Uh, so I think we're only getting better at it uh, as time comes. And, you know, the, the first fight or flight, you know, I fought at it first. I thought about running away, and then I went for the one in the middle, which is just go ahead and embrace it. Uh, listen to what the customers have to say and, and how they might use it. Um, I'm quite intrigued to see that, yeah, 50% uh, are not currently using it, or 52% to be very specific. You know, of 100 people, <clears throat> we'd love to definitely talk to the groups who aren't using it and see how, how we can help you use it or, or, how you, or what maybe you're also scared of uh, as well. Jonathan, have you used any of the new Copilot X that Microsoft just released a, a preview of to be able to go into a Sitefinity code base, for instance, and say uh, in English, uh, can you explain to me what's happening in this file or what is this class doing? Can you create me a widget that does this and it will actually write the code for you? I have a video on, on Devices TV that shows actually how to do that in Sitefinity, but it's amazing. Have you tried this stuff before? I may or may not have watched your video, and I will not tell all my secrets How about that. Uh, I know aside from aside from the information that that you've gathered or other, I have not personally uh, put it into effect or or tried it in any sort of depth uh, at this current point. But it's definitely on the, on the radar, you know, in between my my day job, so to speak. But uh, it's definitely a very intriguing concept, and in, in how it could help, you know, generate new new components or capabilities within you know any type of system that's excellent thank you jonathan i really appreciate it and sergey sergey and i go a long way that's over a decade and a half now uh, let's go ahead and talk sergey about the main questions like for a business analyst running for instance the back end of a cms system and specifically for sitefinity if you'd like as well and also for marketeers what do you foresee ai to be able to do, and if you can give us any hints about the future of Sitefinity, uh, that would be great to know what's coming in the future. If you can actually share with us some of the roadmap as well, that would be awesome. Oh, we can hear you. All right, thanks. All right, perfect. Yeah. Uh, double mute as usual. Um, so, if I start talking about roadmap, that may take another forty minutes. That's not a good path. <laughs> Now I have to I have to note that you know after all, all the material you covered, um, I feel like I'm in, a, I'm in a Thai restaurant with a menu that has 125 items, and I need to pick two: one for me and one for my wife. It's called cheesecake factory. You have that. <laughs> we do, <laughs> right? And uh, so, uh, not that we didn't expect uh sort of the floodgates well we didn't expect the floodgates to open right we knew there was water right? that was called ai 
but um, all of a sudden it seems to be everywhere and everybody's talking about it and um, many if not all the vendors are trying to sort of outrun each other with uh, more aggressive implementations but um, there are a few parameters that you sort of need to keep in mind and I will come back to sort of business analysts and uh, marketeers and whatnot. Uh, first, what's allowed? Right now we have um, the space open and uh, particularly with content generation, but generation in general. Um, guardrails are extremely important. Intent is very important and then you go into uh, AI is great, but humans need to be able to control what's coming out. And we had interviews when we were working on uh, the first idea for the content recommender. We had interviews with uh, select customers and mm, somewhat to our surprise back then, sentiment came back that it's great technology if you can do it, but we want to be able to monitor it and say, well, you can recommend this, but you cannot recommend that. Uh, so configurations uh, in the system, uh, whether it is, as I said, intent, style, uh, language, and whatever else, uh, will be important. The main thing is, uh, as Sitefinity does uh, for our customers, it needs to solve problems and different customers, different personas have different problems. Uh, they have different maturities. Some uh, don't even have a content process. Uh, we have the predominance of our customers don't have um, a well-implemented classification system, right? So, I mean, they can generate all sorts of content, uh, but then they wouldn't be able to sort of file it appropriately and so forth. So, depending on the capabilities within the org, um, AI may help or it may hurt. Sergey, let me ask you this question. Are you for actually implementing everything yourself? Because with the explosion of AI, I see hundreds of companies being created every day <laughs> regarding AI right now. Right. And some of them are only doing the guardrail piece and they want to be plugged mm -hmm. into other CMS systems or any product that needs to have guardrails. So they don't want to do the whole thing. It's so huge. So are you thinking yep. about maybe uh, partnering with these companies to do the guardrail piece or does Progress actually think about Sitefinity or other products to do the whole guardrail in-house for something like that? Uh, so first on the principle, uh, Sitefinity has always been, and these days it's even more important than before, an open system. So uh, we did stuff ourselves, uh, but given that we are, well, progress is 2,500 people, right? But not all of them are working on Sitefinity. I wish 2,500 people were, but uh, that's not the case. So we need to be open to using whatever other solutions and resources are available in the field uh, to creatively and usefully integrate as we have. Uh, Specifically on the AI, we have some of our own technologies. So as a matter of fact, our start with AI was, uh, and that was on Sitefinity Insight, which is our uh, light CDP for Sitefinity. We had a third party algorithm from Microsoft integrated for anomaly analysis uh, with respect to traffic conversion rates and whatnot. And then we developed our own algorithm for uh, content attribution. Uh, which was actually unique based on what I know because it uses AI to determine the relative weights of different touch points. It doesn't require a marketeer to, um, uh, to set them up. Uh, and then it continued, but now that we were looking at all these uh, options, each of which, uh, as you presented, will likely have more than one vendor trying to do it it will be sort of silly to attempt to do that in-house, right? right? So that never entered my mind. But even the integrations need to be selected. Uh, the uh, convenient part is that with Sitefinity having a headless interface so we can easily ship content out with the workflow in place, we can send content out, uh, have something done to it, receive it in Sitefinity, uh, display it for review and then push it through the workflow. Um, and there aren't too many constraints as far as um, the nature of the system that um, there would be. 
uh, but that's on the content generation and curation, translation, and so forth. With respect to journey optimization, that's a little more complicated, uh, just because there's a lot more data involved. Uh, some data um, we collect internally, some data uh, we may want to import, and some data sort of lives somewhere else. So stitching that to make a comprehensive picture of what is actually happening with visitors' journeys, what content they read uh, in different places, and uh, kind of the social web that they're in. That's a major problem. On one hand, of course, AI is the vehicle that can help with that, because what's AI good at? Uh, helping people process information that's inaccessible to a single human. So we should rely, uh, definitely rely on that. Uh, but at some point you can sort of get choked with information, maybe it starts hallucinating, right? So all, uh, there's, there's kind of a careful balance there. Uh, but there are certainly tantalizing choices, but we, we do need to uh, keep coming back to what do people actually need to do, right? And those um, 50 plus percent who are not using AI at the moment, uh, that may be for different reasons. They may be not set up, uh, they may not necessarily need it, um, or they may be unsure how to do it and they're just looking for uh, something to pick. So uh, a few things that we are doing with AI, um, well, we are investing first and foremost in uh, the native chat technology. And not only, so this is our chatbot platform developed in progress, uh, it has built-in NLP, which uh, for the most part is third party actually, but it's uh, creatively integrated to, uh, to yield a great experience, uh, that uh, we are looking to not only uh, make it integrated with uh, content repositories, so Affinity being one of them, but uh, external ones, uh, for the purposes of retrieving content, but um, implementing interfaces to systems, whether it's information retrieval, but even using it uh, on the Sitefinity backend. So we have a prototype of creating pages with the chatbot uh, using generative content, which is external, uh, but the workflow is based on uh, programmed native chat and the Sitefinity APIs, so you can uh, talk to the chatbot and say what kind of a uh, uh, landing page you want and for what kind of audience and what kind of material you want to use for gated asset. Uh, and it can create you a ready landing page and you just hit publish and off it goes. Uh, that's, uh, that's one. And uh, we can easily envision, not that it's easy to implement, but uh, that being an interface to creating uh, assets in Sitefinity as opposed to clicking the menus and uh, using that sort of navigation. Uh, there's a lot of investment on the insight side. Uh, we're working on content analytics there using the same uh, large language model approach. Uh, it's just we, uh, the, the training set is uh, relatively small, uh, but it's, so because we're not attempting to do uh, content generation, but as far as content classification, content relevance, it's still the same um, sort of vector space with content embeddings that's used by um, OpenAI. And our content recommendation algorithm is based on that technology. Uh, that's our own and uh, we obviously want to extend that and refine. Uh, we're also working on something that a number of customers expressed interest in, um, propensity scoring. Uh, that's journey analytics, um, trying to distill the intent of a visitor uh, and then optimize the subsequent steps uh, given that analysis. So the first and very simple uh, mapping is uh, lead scoring. Uh, but uh, at the same time, um, that could be extrapolated to engagement. There could be uh, sort of multiple uh, implementations of that too. Um, and the third is uh, integrating, I would say, all sorts of stuff <laughs> for content generation analysis and uh, et cetera into the Sitefinity backend. Many of these things um, are actually planned for later this year, so um, certainly stay tuned. Uh, and some um, may actually get 
uh, presentation is for early access um, earlier in the fall. That is excellent. And actually, right now, Charlene opened up uh, the final poll. So thank you for those of you that actually are uh, are giving us information about the content generation or the image classification, tagging, uh, journey optimization, and the content recommendation, which part will be the most interesting for you for the AI based on what you heard. So this will be great. Thank you for doing that. And it's now closed, and we have the biggest one, our journey optimization, 72%, and the content recommendation was also 72%. The uh, image classification and tagging was 63%, and the content generation was 56%. So this is definitely very good information wow. to have. So this is great. And thank you, Sergey, so much, and Jonathan, for, uh, for your insights on that. Uh, we should have actually uh, one more of those uh, in the future because this stuff is changing so fast that I know we can actually spend another two, three hours on the topic probably uh, to discuss this. So I would like to open up the last five minutes or so uh, for any questions coming in, uh, and we can actually try to, uh, to answer them if you don't mind, you guys. Is that okay? So we have a question uh, from uh, Chris. Chris, so with the looming sunset of Google Universal Analytics, will Cyfinity CMS ever get a GA4 analytics module? Will Cyfinity Insights... Uh, fill that space. Sergey, we're going to take that one. Well, um, all right. It's, um, I'm not going to say publicly that we're going to compete with Google, <laughs> number one. <laughs> um, however, uh, there are areas um, that, um, well, first of all, we can uh, play along because um, insight uh, collects different type of data with certain overlap. Um, and furthermore, with Google Tag Manager, uh, we can collect interactions that are actually uh, tracked by Google. Uh, we're looking at integrating GA4 reporting into Sitefinity CMS as well, now that our old content reporting is uh, gone because Universal Analytics is gone. But uh, rather, we're looking at uh, potentially bringing um, content reporting together uh, from multiple sources, not to replicate Looker Studio or I know Power BI or any of those, uh, just to get that data uh, at the fingertips of, of marketers. So uh, I view this as uh, more a cooperation with GA. Uh, the one thing, of course, that we um, could help people uh, is data privacy, right? Because with Cyfinity Insight, which is HIPAA compliant, uh, SOC compliant, et cetera, it's uh, very secure and protected with multiple controls. So uh, if privacy of data in any way is important, uh, that's where we can certainly help. Uh, and we can offer some of the same metrics, uh, even expanded to different types of documents. So it's not just page visits but uh, read documents, watched videos, and various uh, custom interactions as well with um, custom content types. Excellent, this is uh, great. Let's, we have a, less than a minute and a half left. Let's take one more question. Um, it says, is progress looking to provide developer training models so that developers can benefit with tools like Copilot by full understanding of progress that a can do portfolio, for instance? Is that something that you- Wonderful are idea. Uh, Lena, I think um, we need to discuss that, uh, you being one of the chief trainers on Sitefinity, uh, what specifically we could do, because there are uh, creative ways to utilize that, uh, even with our Visual Studio extension. Yeah. Uh, because, well, it already gives you the templates for the widgets, yeah. um, and mating that with Copilot uh, will probably get you at least 80% to your ready widget. Uh, couple that with widget designers that are codeless and uh, sort of there you go. So um, not that we planned it yet, uh, but I think it's an excellent question and an like, excellent area um, to look into. Excellent. I know we're at time. Sergey, I want to thank you. Jonathan, thank you so much for being with us on this one. And I would like to also thank Charlene. Um, and uh, this was a lot of fun. And like we said, the video will be available for everybody. And I'll pass it back to you, Charlene. Go for it. Thank you, Lino. Oh, we can't hear you, Charlene.
Well, you you did it all, you know. So <laughs> thank you everybody for joining today and we'll speak to you soon. Bye. Thank you guys. All right. Have a great day. Appreciate you. it. Bye bye.